Ivrim, Hebrews 9. Then, truly, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the menorah, and the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, and the ark of the covenant, overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and a haran's rod that budded, and the sapphires of the covenant, and over it the cherubim of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of Yahweh, but into the second went the high priest, alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Ruach HaKadosh, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time when present, rather than present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices, that could not make him that did the service perfect, as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks, and diverse washings, and carnal ordinances, imposed on them until the time of restoration. But Hamashiach, being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through the eternal Ruach offered himself without spot to Ethyahua, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living Yah? And for this cause... He is the mediator of the renewed covenant, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first covenant, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For if a testament is of force after men are dead, Rather, for a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator lives. Whereupon, neither the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moshe had spoken every precept to all the people according to the Torah, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the Sefer and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which Yahuwah has enjoined to you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things are by the Torah purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. It was necessary, rather therefore necessary, that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But 
the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For HaMashiach is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of Yahuwah for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And, as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Hamashiach was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto Yahshua. Chapter 14